Honestly, at this point, this stuff is getting so ridiculous that I don't understand why we're continuing to be okay with the current trajectory course on how we're supposed to live and create and build as artists, especially independent artists, without being able to afford a monthly bill for our software. Hey everybody, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and welcome back to my channel. I've been thinking about this video for a while, and I've been thinking about how I wanted to structure it and really kind of dig into it, because this is something that's been bothering me a lot this year. And it's not just so much with the fact that, you know, I, I pay a lot in subscriptions. I, I do a lot. But this year alone, it's gotten me more thinking about the fact that, like, I don't own any of this stuff. The things I create don't exist unless I pay a fee to use the software that I use to create things. And over time, that started to not sit very well with me. If you guys don't know who I am, my name's Matt. I run Cryptic Visionary. I'm a 3D artist on the internet. I teach people Autodesk Maya and a plethora of other software. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about something that I think kind of plagues our industry, which is software subscription prices and just how awful they really truly are. And if anything from this video, I want you to take away that like there are better options out there and you don't have to worry about constantly having to figure out how to actually afford your applications. So the big question is, why am I making this video? Well, over the past couple of years, if you've been a subscriber to almost anything like I have, Adobe raises prices, Adobe raises prices again, Google raises prices. All of these companies continue to raise their prices and integrate things that we don't want, we don't need. And then the big question is, is why are we still doing this? Why are we still paying for this? The main reason, they have us convinced that we have to. We don't. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey with all of this and when this kind of started, right? So it was about last year when I got my first email from Adobe saying, hey, your Substance Painter subscription is going to go up by $10 a month. I was already paying $15 a month for Substance Painter. So for me, I was like, damn, that's kind of rough. That's quite a bit extra per month that I, you know, that I didn't necessarily want to spend at the time. And so at that point, it really got me thinking, what can I do here? And so I put up with it for a little bit and then it came around time again and Adobe raised prices on most of their other suites. This then affected me because I also paid for Adobe Photoshop at the time. So now every single month I was losing 45 to $55 a month just to Adobe. Granted, it's software I used and it's software that I teach and it's software that I found really important uh, that I needed to kind of continue on using. And so, the problem then is how do you separate from that? And there's two options. One, if you're comfortable with it, you can sell the high seas. That's kind of a personal choice and it's something that I didn't necessarily want to do because I want to be as legitimate as possible because I'm on the internet as a presence and I do content and stuff like that and I work with businesses. So for me, you know, putting on an eye patch and sailing the high seas wasn't really an option. So what, what do you do at that point? Well, thankfully the internet is a wonderful thing and there's tons of information out there. So I got to looking. I found a host of different softwares that I had never really heard of. And honestly, this kind of opened the floodgates for me a little bit. The first thing on my list to get rid of basically was Adobe Photoshop. I didn't use it for anything else aside from the, you know, the minor texture correction or thumbnails for YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff. That's really all I used it for. I didn't really use it for much else. So I didn't need something that was gonna be like a one-to-one -one replacement. I just needed something to, that was close. And oh my God, did I find something that was not only close, but better. So I came across this company called Affinity. Affinity makes two pieces of software, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. I chose to go with Affinity Photo. Now you're probably saying, well, why would you just go with another software brand? Well, because obviously I need the software. So I needed something that I knew would do this and didn't have a subscription fee. That was my big kicker. It did not have a subscription fee. I didn't care if the software wanted me to pay for an upgrade later on down the road because it's generally cheaper once you've bought the software to begin with, but I wanted it to not have a subscription. Affinity Photo was that answer. It was $79 one time. You can even get it on sale like once a year and it's even cheaper. But Affinity Photo not only was faster, it worked better. It has a lot of the same tools that Photoshop does. Even some of the ones that I used like the AI background removal because that helps me a lot when I'm trying to cut my body out of my frame in my in my office to use for a thumbnail. There are certain tools in there that like, that I, I knew going into it, I would probably miss from Photoshop, but I haven't missed a thing. I haven't wanted for anything else. And it took 
took maybe he took maybe a couple of projects to learn affinity and there are still some things where i can't figure out where they are and i just end up having to google them but the transition was easy i think that's what's important to note here is the transition was easy a lot of people tend to get very stressed out over the idea that they're going to have to change their whole thing and change all their software when the reality is you don't one of the things that i've noticed with a lot of these companies is they try to mirror the top applications as much as possible but still be unique in their own way DaVinci Resolve, another beautiful example of how I don't have to give Adobe any more of my money because I don't pay for Premiere anymore. I have DaVinci Resolve. It's great. There's tutorials all over the place for it. And it's becoming such a standard for content creators now that it's just an awesome option. And it's free. If you really want to pay for studio, you can. It's like 300 bucks. Or if you want to buy a Blackmagic camera, you get it for free. Um, but it's, it's, it's free and that's just another great option. It's just a good piece of software. And that's the thing. I'm looking for software that I know is going to handle the workloads that I'm gonna give it, but also not cost me every single month. So right there, I've already removed about $50 worth of subscriptions from my life, not having to pay for Photoshop and not having to pay for Premiere. That left me with one more Adobe product. And that product is one that I love and I did not wanna leave. I did not wanna get rid of it, but I also didn't wanna pay for it again every single month. That product is Adobe Substance Painter, or as it used to be known, Substance Painter. Adobe bought them a couple years ago, and since then, they haven't really changed much. It hasn't really gotten much better. There are a couple of quality of life improvements that have come out, but in general, over the two to three years that I've been using it, it hasn't changed dramatically enough for me to say, yeah, I'll continue paying for this. And maybe it will in the future. There is a great option for that if you didn't know. So Substance Painter, you can buy monthly from Adobe. You could pay yearly from Adobe, or you could buy it indefinitely on Steam. This was something I didn't necessarily know was even a thing, but if you pay the $200 that it costs on Steam to just buy it outright, you get to keep it forever. I guess the caveat there is you don't get an update every single year and you don't get access to Adobe's suite of materials and stuff, but the Adobe asset community is actually pretty wide scale and I've never really needed to find anything outside of that for materials if I ever needed them. So for me, this was kind of a no brainer. So I switched to that, which removed every ounce of paying for any piece of Adobe software, minus the fact that I gave them a final $200. And this is great because if I ever decide that like a new tool comes out that I'm like, oh God, I gotta have that. I can just do that again and I still own it. And I still own 2025. So I have two versions now at this point. This is one of the most important things I think that we can kind of look at now going forward as artists and creatives is why are we continuing to pay so much per month for all of these pieces of software? And so this has bled into my life in ways that I didn't really expect, right? I've gotten rid of my YouTube music subscription. I got rid of my Nest subscription. I've gotten rid of so many subscriptions at this point that it's lovely. It's, it's really wonderful, but there are still some subscriptions that I'm keeping. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that most of my content is based on Autodesk Maya. I love Maya. I've been using Maya for almost 15 years and it's literally one of my favorite pieces of software. I will continue to pay for Maya because they have an awesome indie option that ends up working out to like 20 something dollars a month. It's pretty affordable uh, if you buy it per year. I don't mind paying that every year because for me, the value that I get out of it is pretty much matched with how much I pay for it. And the cool thing about indie is I can continue to make money off of it as long as I don't reach a certain threshold to where then I need to buy like a professional license. But indie has been an op awesome option and it's one of the subscriptions that I did not want to get rid of. And so what if you don't wanna pay for that or can't pay for that? What do you do? There's a couple of options now. You can get Houdini for free as an educational sort of like license. You don't have to pay for it. It's definitely a lot harder to learn, but depending on what your goals are with it, you could do that. The bigger one that everyone talks about now, because it's growing in popularity immensely, is Blender. Blender is an awesome option if you don't want to pay for a large subscription price or a large software price. This can mean you're, you're more of a hobbyist or you just don't want to have that monthly kind of bill. Uh, Blender is an awesome option. It's just not my favorite option, but I always recommend that people who don't want to pay for subscriptions or don't want to pay for a yearly license fee, go for Blender. It's a great tool. A lot of this software is expensive and, you know, it makes sense in some cases, but in other cases, it almost feels like robbery. And so a lot of times with Adobe, I felt like I was just kind of being robbed because my software got slower every year. My, it crashed a lot. 
it was never working properly. And so I just got tired of paying every single year for that. So 2025 has been a pretty good year for that software. So I bought it and I said, cool, I'm stuck with this. It's going to work for a while. Another one, which has been a big one for me, which is one that I'm learning currently is ZBrush. ZBrush is a tough one. So ZBrush back in 2022 was purchased by Maxon. Maxon has been cranking the price on ZBrush pretty consistently over the past couple of years. Now to the point where it actually costs more than Maya, which I think is insane. Now ZBrush for me has been kind of a, I just want to learn this and just understand it and kind of know how to sculpt and do stuff. Like I, I really don't consider myself being a big ZBrush creator because I just, I like doing what I do. I do hard surface work. So for me, ZBrush was like just taking $60 and setting it on fire every month because like I only used it like one day out of each month. And so what do you do there? Unfortunately, that's one of the ones that I kind of came to a crossroads with. I didn't really know what to do. ZBrush doesn't have a perpetual option. They have a yearly option, which is definitely cheaper than paying $60 a month, but they don't have a perpetual option anymore. It's gone. It's forever gone. But thankfully, Zach from my community uh, reached out to me because we were both full sale graduates and he let me know that we still have access to our 2022 licenses. Uh, which is really cool because I didn't realize we had access to that and I didn't realize that it was upgraded to 2022 because I got that in 2011. Before Maxon bought PixLogic, they gave everyone who had access to ZBrush a 2022 license and basically said, this is it. This is your perpetual license. You get to keep this forever. So I'm now on that, which is awesome. Saves me a lot of money. So what do you do if you can't do that, if you don't have that option. Well, on the off chance that you can find somebody selling a 2022 copy that actually comes with their licensing information, you're kind of out of luck when it comes to ZBrush. There are options out there. There is Blender, which their sculpting suite is about to get a lot better with their Vulkan integration. On top of that, there's Nomad Sculpt, which is also getting better and finally getting a PC port. And there's 3D Coat, which is another application that people use to replace Substance Painter because again, it has a node locked perpetual license option, which is crazy. They also offer a rent to own solution, which is something I want to touch on. Rent to own is a nice concept when it comes to the software, because the whole idea is if you're paying something monthly, you want to make sure that there's an endpoint to that. And with things like Adobe, there's no endpoint. They don't want you to have an endpoint. They want you to continue paying them forever to continue making your software suck. 3D Coat offers what is called a rent to own program. It's the same kind of program that the software I use for my UV unwrapping Rhizome offers, which is rent to own. You basically pay a monthly fee for up to whatever period of time. For Rhizome, it was 12 months. And then for 3D Coat, you can choose between 11 months and seven months. But this gives you the option to basically purchase your software in a subscription form and then own it eventually. I don't think a lot of people know that this is an option for some software. It's something that's really important to look for when you're trying to choose what apps you're gonna work for. Generally, most of these applications do the same thing nowadays. Sure, some have better features than others, but most of the time we can find good workarounds with stuff. I wanted to make this video because I wanted to let people know that you don't have to stay stuck paying month to month to month to month with these subscription fees. It's just, it's gotten so out of hand and it's only getting worse. And these companies are only getting more bold about it. And so for me, I, I want to try to use my platform to show people like you don't have to do this. Like this is not something you gotta do all the time. It's cool if you choose to pay for a subscription for something that you really like. I'm doing the same thing for Maya. I like Maya, I, I generally like Autodesk's products, so I don't mind paying for them every year. But those options are out there. And so if you're stuck trying to figure out how you can avoid paying for subscriptions, but how you can also do things legitimately and just kind of get away from these larger companies, take a look at some of the software that I mentioned in this video. It's really good stuff. It just works. And it's, it's crazy to think that you can have software that just works and doesn't crash and doesn't lag and doesn't get stuck on the simplest of things. I'm looking at you, Photoshop. There are so many better options out there, and I think it's time a lot of us start looking at those options, especially if you're a freelancer, because the last thing you wanna do is have more bills to pay than you have income coming in. We always toe that line as freelancers on trying to make money as well as you know not control our costs. And one of our biggest costs as 
3D artists is software. Whether you're using Blender and buying a bunch of plugins or whether you're using Maya with Houdini and Substance Painter and all of these other applications, it comes down to controlling costs. And in today's day and age where all of these companies are taking more and more advantage of us, it's kind of time to start pulling things back. And so hopefully this video kind of helped you out, helped you understand that like there are better ways to get away from a lot of this. And I'd be curious to know what software have you replaced larger pieces of software like Adobe or, or even Autodesk? What have you replaced it with? And do you enjoy it? Do you miss the old stuff? I know I would miss Maya if I moved to Blender. So it's just one of those things that I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop paying for that one. But if I ever have to, Blender's an amazing option. So anyways, guys, I know this was kind of a ranty video, but I felt like it was something I wanted to make and, uh, I wanna get back to doing a little bit more of content like this because it, it kind of helps fill the gaps on the tutorial content and it does kind of do a little bit better performance wise. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you give me a follow. Definitely helps grow the channel more. And um, again, leave me, a, <clears throat> and again, leave a comment. Let me know what software have you switched to that you don't regret going to because I'm always curious about learning new apps. So that's it for this one, guys. I will see you all in the next one. And I've never really needed to find